Hey everybody, my name's Laurel and I'm Global Program Coordinator at LU Send. Have you ever wondered what it looks like to get academic credit towards your degree while studying abroad? If this is something that interests you, join LU Send at the Montview Student Union for our annual LU Send Fair from September 6 to 7, where you can learn what it looks like to get course credit while studying abroad. See you then. Welcome back to New at All You. My name is Riley. And I'm Abby. It was great to be back in the stadium this past weekend, and we look forward to seeing you guys again this Saturday. Kickoff is at 6 p.m., and we're celebrating by Recycling Right. Check this out. Flames fans, at this weekend's game, we're competing against universities across the nation to reduce waste and increase recycling. Our recycling, food organics, and waste collected during this game will count towards the campus race to Zero Waste Game Day Challenge. Help us by purchasing reusable cups, recycling your plastic bottles and supporting our sustainability goals. Let's beat them in football and recycling too. This is a week of the Virginia Christmas Spectacular Auditions. Auditions run from tomorrow until Saturday, so sign up now to be a part of this amazing production. Welcome back, Liberty students. If you're looking for ways to serve this semester, we invite you to audition for this year's Virginia Christmas Spectacular at Thomas Road Baptist Church. Join the actors, singers, dancers, instrumentalists, and many other volunteers needed to pull off this Broadway scale production. Auditions will be held the second weekend of September. To sign up for your audition slot, visit trvc.org slash VCS. Campus Community is tonight at 7 p.m. We're continuing our series, Behold, right here in the Vine Center. Student Activities is back with Neon Mini Golf on September 15th. Join us at the School of Divinity. Check this out. Congratulations to Liberty's Worship Collective on its first week with their new album, Fire of a Thousand Years. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you do and share it with all your friends and family. How we long to be with you. There's power in your presence. There's power in your presence. Hockey is going up against Harvard this Friday, September 8th. And the game starts at 4 p.m., but if you can't be there in person, you can visit the Liberty Flames website for live stats. We're excited for the LU Auto Show coming up next week on September 15th and 16th. With many dealers and vehicles being represented at Virginia's largest outdoor auto show, we encourage all of y'all to come out. We're looking forward to Grand Fiesta Latina, full of food, music, and fun on September 22nd. Make it out to the academic lawn from 9 to 11 p.m. Tornwells is coming to campus this Seafall weekend. Tickets for students are only $10, so make sure you get your tickets while you watch this video. Enjoy your day at LU.
You have no right to be ordinary. God has called you to be extraordinary. Can we say a big thank you to Ethan Reeves? Well, we've got a great convo for you today. We've got great convos all week. We've got Granger Smith here today and Toby Mack here on Friday. So it is a great week here at Liberty. But before we move into, move into our worship this morning, I want to remind you tonight is campus community and our own Josh Rutledge is speaking tonight. So you definitely want to come out tonight, 7 o'clock, bring your booklet with you. It's going to be a great opportunity for us to continue talking about who Jesus is. What an important question and what an important answer we all need to seek. Let's pray together this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the opportunity we have to come to this place as we always do, to lift up one name. And it's not the name of a speaker, it's not the name of a singer, it's the name of of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the only one worthy of our praise. And so, God, I pray that as we gather here together today, open our hearts to your word. Help us to see, hear, and experience something today that will change us and draw us closer to you. And for that, Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory of the work you're going to do in our lives today. Thank you for Granger's come today to share his heart, to share his story. 
We thank you for how you're using him to impact people with the gospel. And I thank you that today he will impact us. And God, it is this that we pray in your name, the name of your son and our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's worship together.
worship this morning. Y'all can have a seat. I'm excited to introduce today's guest to y'all. After 24 years of traveling as a country music artist, he recently felt called by the Lord to leave the music industry and pursue full-time ministry. He actually performed his last show last week before being with us this week. Yeah, you can clap. <laughs> He's here today to tell us a little bit about that journey and about his incredible testimony, which you can read about in his new book, Like a River. Would you please wel help me in welcoming all the way from Texas, Granger Smith. That's perfect. Morning. Well, my name is Granger, and I am husband to Amber. I am father to London, Lincoln, River, and Maverick, and we are members of Emmaus Church in Georgetown, Texas. And it is a huge honor to be here this morning, September 6th, 
Liberty University. September 6th, Liberty University. You know, that phrase I used many times to feel peace in a time in my life that could have had a lot of anxiety. September 6th, Liberty University. I understand that speakers are brought here to maybe bring an encouraging word or a little conviction. And I want you to know that you have already been that for me. September 6th, Liberty University. Let me explain. And I want to rewind the clock a bit to August the 26th, 2023. That's a day I'll never forget. It is a day that signifies the greatest shift in my professional career. And that was only 11 days ago. Before we go there, I, I want to read a text from the Bible, and it, it's a famous one. I assume most of you have heard it or read it many times, but I, I kind of want to sit in the moment of that with you. I'm talking about Mark chapter 8, verse 34 through 36. This is talking about Jesus. It says, And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Those are not coddling words, not an invitation to a party. In fact, it, it sounds more like military commands from a general. Matthew 10, 38 says it this way. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. That's tough rhetoric. So maybe we could say it this way. If you want to be a Christian, then begin today a life of self-denial. Stop doing all those things that you love for yourself and instead become a miserable martyr for Christ and then maybe you will be worthy of him. No, that's, that's not right. That's never been taught in Christianity ever. Ephesians 2 says this, for by grace you've been saved through faith and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. It's like the Apostle Paul is saying, what are you doing? You're dragging that cross around. You're looking for a pat on the back. You can't earn this. Earlier in Ephesians, Paul says this, for God being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you've been saved. Yeah, but, but wait, what, but what do we do with these military-like commands of Jesus? If anyone would come after me, let him take up his cross, deny himself. What, what do we do with this? That sounds a little bit like our own doing, doesn't it? Well, Watch how Paul brings both of these ideas together in Colossians 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, you just hear that sentence, if then you've been raised with Christ, you would assume that what comes after is a result of being raised with Christ. If then you've been raised with Christ, then seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For or because you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, sit with that for a second, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory, put to death 
therefore what is earthly in you. Both of these passages have a death in them. Ephesians says you were dead in your trespasses. In Colossians, you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. In both instances, death happens. You die, you're born again, and then the following of the command. Psalm 119 says it this way, give me understanding so that I could follow your commands. Following is a result of that gift. To take up your cross, to follow Jesus, to deny yourselves are marks of a people that have died and have been born again. That shouldn't surprise us. Jesus said in John 3, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Peter said, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Ah, now the puzzle pieces are coming together. When Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me, in one sense, he's identifying a certain kind of person that can do that. Not a person that has earned it, but a person that has died and then was caused to be reborn. It's, it's like he's saying, here's how you'll know who my people are. They're the ones that deny themselves, take up the crosses and follow me. Jesus says in John 10, my sheep will hear my voice. That explains it, almost. There's a problem, there's still a problem. Denying oneself, taking up a cross, the symbol of execution, that sounds horrible, doesn't it? I wonder if the Bible could help with this too. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says this, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Are you telling me that carrying a cross is light? <laughs> Do you know how heavy my cross is? That's what he says. Psalm 119 says something crazy too. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. How could anyone delight in rules? There's many things in this world to delight over, but rules, that doesn't sound delightful. September 6th, Liberty University. Let me tell you my story. For most of my life, I did the opposite of that. I didn't deny myself. I grew up in a Christian home, very involved in church. I didn't deny myself though. I played Texas high school football, was an FCA, young life, youth ministries, camps. I went to Texas A&M for college, but none of that was denying myself. My friends did that stuff too. The slope downward is deceivingly gradual into the stagnant pit of an unforgiving American cultural Christianity. I love to play music. After 15 years or so of doing that as a job, things were going pretty well, topping the billboard charts, selling records, selling tickets, lots of tickets. I remember I had a record label party for my first number one song and I stood on a little stage at this industry party and I told the crowd that this happened because we worked hard. We outworked all the other teams in the industry. We envisioned, we manifested, we did it. I wasn't denying myself. There's an easy test that can prove this. Who got the credit? 
for the providence in my life. Me. Who gets the credit in your life? I, I'm not asking for your culturally Christian influenced answer. I'm, I'm asking your heart. Why are you seeking the degree that you're studying for right now? And for whose glory will you use it? There's so many American athletes and entrepreneurs, influencers that say God is their first priority. Most of them are living a life glorifying themselves. And then they type God first on their social media bio. But everything they do and say and watch and listen to and laugh at is no different than everyone else in the world. That was me. I went on this way for a long time until everything that I thought I had built came crashing down. That's when my three-year-old son River died in my arms. It was in my backyard. When you hold a lifeless child in your hands, one that you love more than most things in the world, it will change you. You will question how much control you really have in your life. In the immediate wake of that heartbreaking loss, I hit rock bottom. Under that grief, shame, guilt, I was physically, spiritually, emotionally falling deeper and deeper until I couldn't even see a purpose in living. And my cultural Christianity couldn't save anything. Do we have any cultural Christians here this morning? Odds are there's a bunch. Is it you? That was me. For months and months, I, I desperately searched for an answer of healing. I was like a drowning man, just gasping for air. I read every self-help book and every cute little Christian devotional. I meditated and medicated from a therapist and a pharmacist. However, trying to love myself more was not denying myself. I didn't know how to do that until everything changed. I was driving my truck and I remember everything about this day. I remember the look of the blue sky. I remember the steering wheel in my hands and the way that it felt. I remember the mile marker on that county road in Texas where I was driving when I heard it. A sermon I was listening to on YouTube talking out of John 14. The disciple asked Jesus in John 14, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Jesus is not saying here that those who keep his word will earn his love. That's not what he's saying. He's saying you could tell the ones that Jesus loves because those are the ones as a result of that love that keep his word. It's like saying that you could tell who the butterflies are because they're the caterpillars with wings. They didn't do that themselves. As a response to being bathed in the intimate love of Jesus, his people just can't help themselves. They keep his word. That realization killed me. 
The old me died in that truck and I was reborn. And nothing after that, nothing looked the same. To which you might ask, how do you know that, Granger? How could you make a claim like that? Because from that day on, I wanted to keep his word. Slowly it became all I wanted to study and read and all I hungered for and I craved. And I kept his word very imperfectly. And through all my flaws and faults and imperfections and sin, I just, I just wanted to get a little bit better. I didn't want to live the old life of the old self anymore. And then sometimes, maybe many times, I would start slipping back into sin and I desperately wanted to kill it again. Not because I was earning any kind of favor to God for that, but because I was made new and I wanted to deny my old self, the one that died in that truck. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Hey, that's not a comfortable command, but it's also not a burden. It's not a chore. Here I am, Lord. I'm coming. This cross is heavy. <laughs> this road is treacherous. But as Psalm 119 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hey, it, it doesn't require a, a lot of complex theology to say it this way. I like denying myself for his sake. That's the difference in the old me and the new me. Denying yourself as a Christian doesn't mean forcing yourself to do things that you hate. It's the opposite. And over the years for me, that, that, that started to surface in different ways. The first big one is, was in 2021, when going against all my wise business counsel, I wanted to leave my record label. It's a really good record label. But it was taking up too much time and it wasn't meaningful or didn't have any kind of relevance to God's kingdom. Instead, it was just about promoting myself. And I just didn't want to do that after my rebirth. I wanted to leave the label. And shedding that weight, it felt good for a little bit, but it didn't last long because after about a year, that wasn't enough of a sacrifice. My sanctification has started zeroing in on something else, something bigger than my record label, much bigger. In fact, outside of my family, it was my greatest love, my greatest financial income, my greatest passion for the greater part of my entire life. It was music touring itself. Can you imagine? taking your most useful talent, your most productive skill, the very thing that you do best that everyone identifies you as, and then you say, Lord, I'm giving this back to you. Redeem it for your glory or not, but either way, it's getting in the way of my new identity in you. So I told those closest to me, starting with my wife and Together we made an exit plan, one more tour, allow fans to say goodbye. And then day by day, city by city, I worked through the tour. Many people were encouraging, many were sad, many couldn't understand and some were even angry with me. And many people questioned, why can't you just use the country music stage to talk about Jesus, Granger? That's the gift he gave you. Why do you got to quit it all? That's a good question. I thought about it a lot. And it was very easy to test for me. Here's the test. If I walk on stage playing music and nobody sings, nobody cheers, nobody shows up, would I take that personally? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then, then it's about exalting myself then. And I, I need to deny that. Exalting myself doesn't reconcile with the gospel. John the Baptist said it this way, he must increase, but I must decrease. I felt that. Many times as Christians, 
we have to give up things that aren't inherently bad themselves. Like music touring is not a sin in itself, and neither is social media or caffeine or alcohol or college football. But anything can become sin when it starts to hinder our walk with Jesus. So we, we have to surrender that. That's part of what it means to deny yourself. So I continued this farewell tour. I just wasn't totally sure with how I would feel when it came to the end. This major chapter in my life closing, I, was, I didn't know how I would feel about that. Those train tracks were gonna end in Texas, my home state on August 25th and 26th. And about 10,000 people showed up to be part of this final weekend, this great finale, and possibly see a broken man get emotional on the stage. Maybe even regretting his decision, you know? People thought I'd lost my mind. I was aware of that. My, my whole phone was blowing up. Everyone, everyone's like, hey, I'm sure this is going to be such an emotional time for you, Granger. And the people would say, I know this has to be so bittersweet. Truth is, I didn't feel that. Do you know what I was thinking about backstage before I played my last concert? Do you know what I was thinking about right before I walked up those steps to go on my very last music stage? September 6th, Liberty University. I was thinking about this. The first stage of the new stages in my life. That little phrase. Okay, you could clap, but it's okay. Go ahead. This stage, this day, that phrase represented a sunrise of a new day, a new beginning, something that gave me so much rest. Denying yourself for Christ is not a burden, it's peace. Augustine once said, you arouse us so that praising you may bring us joy because you have made us and drawn us to yourself and our heart is restless until it rests in you. I have felt that rest in him. I repeated those words, September 6th, Liberty University, as God reminded me that that chapter in my life was closing and he provided it to equip me, but the next one would be much, much greater. And there is one more thing I, I, I need to make clear, I need to address in this, one more thing. Christians are marked as those that deny themselves, take up the crosses and follow Jesus. But they willingly do that because they feel joy in doing that. During my last concert, I, I, I tried my best to explain this to the crowd and, and I used a parable that Jesus said in Matthew 13, 44, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. I told them at the concert that we rolled up that weekend in tour buses that were sold, playing on music equipment that was sold, all because I found a treasure that I wanted everyone else to know about. There's one word in that parable that if you miss it, you're gonna miss the entire point of my message and I believe the point of the parable, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. And in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Don't you miss that word joy. Don't you miss that word in there. Don't you read about denying yourself and forget about joy. Following Jesus requires sacrifice. It requires suffering. You will have sorrow and pain and temptation and grief. In this world, you'll have tribulation, but take heart, Christian, because Jesus has overcome the world so that you could have joy through all of it.
even after the unimaginable pain of losing a child. Psalm 1611 says, in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Denying yourself, taking up your cross, following Jesus is not at odds with your joy. In fact, it's the source of it. God's glory. Nothing in this world can satisfy you with the fullness of joy like Christ alone. There's a hymn we sing at church back in Georgetown. It says, my worth is not in skill or name, in win or lose, in pride or shame, but in the blood of Christ that flowed at the cross. As summer flowers, we fade and die. Faith, fame, youth, and beauty hurry by. But life eternal calls to us at the cross. I rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of my soul. I will trust in him, no other. My soul is satisfied in him alone. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of our soul. Jesus, we want to follow you. We desire to follow you, not, not because we're earning anything, but because we've been washed in the blood. And we know that for this is the love of God, that we keep your commandments, and your commandments are not burdensome, but we follow you as we're marked as Christians just out of the overflow of our heart. Father, I pray for this room and these students here this morning. I pray for their hearts. I pray for the one, the one that's here today that says, I feel something. Something's different in me. Something's changing in me. I don't know what it was about this morning, but I, but I feel something happening in me, something I haven't felt before. Maybe this cultural Christianity is sliding off. It's being revealed. Lord, fulfill your promise to us that you have said, like rain on dry earth, your word will not return to you empty, but it shall accomplish that which you purpose and shall succeed in the thing in which you sent it. Fulfill that promise with your word here, September 6th, Liberty University. In Jesus' name, amen.
We're so excited to see you guys tonight at 7 p.m. at Campus Community. Have such a good rest of your day.